You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast, the number one resource and publication for the Internet of Things. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon. We do ask that if you are watching this on YouTube, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. If you're listening to this episode on a podcast directory somewhere, please subscribe so you get the latest episodes as soon as they are out. On today's episode, we have Brandon Canada, the co-founder and chief product officer at Losant. They are a company that has built an easy to use and powerful enterprise IoT platform designed to help teams quickly and securely build real-time connected IoT products and services for their customers. Um, we've had Losan on before. They're a fantastic company, fantastic group of people. Um, we talk a lot about the IoT market from their perspective, the impact of the embedded of embedded technologies, um, popular use case for IoT products. Um, value that of, of vendors investing in R&D to uh, IoT enterprise consumers, why it matters, challenges they're seeing in the space. Um, all in all, fantastic conversation. Brandon is a great guest. I think you'll get a lot of value out of this. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Brandon, to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, let's start off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself to our audience. Absolutely. So once again, my name is Brandon Canaday. I am the uh, chief product officer and one of the co-founders for a IoT platform company called Losant. So we're in business to help people uh, across all industries really bring their specific IoT product or solution to life. And um, tell me a little bit more about the founding story of Losant. I, I've I've met many people on the team um, kind of over the years, and but I, I've always wanted to kind of hear a little bit more about kind of how the company was founded, the opportunity you saw in the space uh, to kind of have the company obviously exist up on, and then grow into what it is today. Yeah, so I'll give you the uh, the short version is um, sure. <laughs> we were uh, prior to Losant, we were in cloud services in a uh, different technology, really not opinionated on any technology at the time. Um, you know, we had grown that organization pretty big, got a really strong understanding of highly scalable, highly secure college services. But uh, kind of near the tenure, we were eventually required near the end of our tenure there. Our customers started coming to us asking, could they use that platform to deploy IoT solutions? Hmm. IoT was gaining a lot of traction, especially cloud based IoT. And, you know, sure, you could deploy it on that platform, but it really didn't have any of the those concepts that IoT requires, the concept of devices, time series data, the rules engine, eventually, you know, the, the publishing an end user experience. So that got us really thinking, you know, what would a platform specifically tailored towards the development of an IoT product uh, look like? We did a little bit of exploration. We're in Cincinnati, Ohio. We're surrounded by mid-tier manufacturing, a lot of perfect customers. We just started knocking on doors, asking questions, and we found out, um, there's a really good opportunity here. This was about seven years ago uh, when Losant was founded. And um, really on two major principles. One was usability. The developer experience on the existing offerings was you know, not that great. We wanted to make something friendly, very easy, very enjoyable to use. And the other was cloud native. Um, at that time, the, the cloud vendors had no concept of IoT. There was nothing in their catalog that said IoT. Mm. Um, so... You know, we found a really strong opportunity to make a cloud native, very user friendly, enjoyable IoT development platform. And that's what we launched with. And uh, we've had a really enjoyable, successful journey. Fantastic. I well, appreciate that overview. Um, let's talk a little bit kind of uh, high level here. I'd love it if you could kind of share your perception or maybe the company's kind of perception of the IoT market as exi it exists today. Obviously, from when you all started Losand, it's changed a decent amount until where it is now. What is the current state of the market in your kind of from your kind of point of view? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really good question. We have what I think is maybe a, a unique perspective on IoT, especially when we talk about manufacturing and industrial. Um, when we started, that was kind of where all the activity was. You know, this industry 4.0, smart manufacturing, industrial IoT. That's where all of the use cases were. And still even today, when you go and look up industrial IoT, most of the use cases are as part of the manufacturing process. Um, but what we've really honed in on and found this growing, this emerging opportunity that our technology is catered for is well, what's happening to the things that they're manufacturing, especially in industrial space, this large equipment that's being created, being shipped to customers. There's no real technology being added to that stuff. 
Uh, so for us, we're not as in the manufacturing process at all. We're on kind of the flip side. We're helping these manufacturers turn the things that they manufacture mm -hmm. into connected products. Uh, so still a huge opportunity manufacturing process, manufacturing floor. That's not for us. We found a great opportunity. It's growing very quickly. A lot of interest on that industrial connected product space. And then also, especially post-COVID, uh, we're seeing a ton of interest in what we call smart environment, which is uh, mm. campuses, rooms, and spaces like that. Understanding occupancy, understanding right. how the space is being used. Do I have too little space, too much space? Sure. Um, so that, that's kind of where we see a lot of the interest in um, IoT as it stands today. Yeah, I've had a lot of conversations recently around the connected spaces and mm -hmm. um, as people are coming back to the offices, just realizing how powerful IoT can be in helping build smart spaces, these connected spaces that um, provide a level of insight and data to these buildings, um, uh, commercial real estate companies, managers, you name it, even companies themselves who rent the space, uh, more insights than they ever had before to be able to really Absolutely. understand how best to kind of build out and how best people are utilizing the space to help them make better decisions. Yeah, especially, you know, right now we're kind of in this time of uncertainty where mm. we're in this back to office plan. Um, we're in hybrid work environments. There's just a lot of unknowns. Right. So facilities management, security, even, you know, the HVAC energy consumption. There's a lot of questions that this technology can help answer. And what's nice is it's very approachable, you know, mm. doing... Um, uninvasive occupancy monitoring. You don't need, you know, actual video cameras, which is uncomfortable for employees. You can do very uh, simple uh, sensors that just count. And uh, with that right. limited, that small amount of data, that very small step, it's amazing how much insight you can get. Absolutely. You mentioned, um, when we're thinking about connected products, um, or you mentioned that a second ago, I wanted to ask a little bit about that. What is for, what have you seen the impact of, or I guess, how have you seen the impact of embedded technology grow um, over the years? And how has it kind of grown to help OEMs, help hardware manufacturers really deliver IoT connected products? Yeah, so this kind of gets into the technology stack and, you know, how difficult it can be when it comes to uh, making a connected product. So if we back up a little bit, one of the fastest ways and still a very popular way convert a piece of equipment into a connected piece of equipment is through a retrofit. So bringing on a small gateway, um, the gateway has, uh, in our case, we have an agent that runs on that. It can talk to the controller on the equipment, get the data to the cloud. Um, no changes required to the equipment. Um, so upsides are very quick, very easy. Downside, high cost. So mm. some of those gateways, especially once you add cellular, can get up into that several hundred, you know, even a thousand dollars. So that uh, limits the, you know, the unit economics sometimes don't work out. It requires some expensive equipment for that retrofit to make sense. So now we get into the embedded world. Um, your computer is much smaller. The cost drops significantly. Hmm. Uh, now you can, you, the product lines that you can convert to connected grows. Um, the challenge with embedded is unlike a gateway that can run, you know, our full agent that's all just drag and drop. Embedded development is hard. It's one of the most complicated types of development there is. Right. Firmware engineers are some of the most sought after engineers. There's not very many of them. Difficult to create. So, you know, we saw that opportunity uh, last year. Um, actually, a couple years ago, we've been uh, we spent about two years trying to well successfully develop, brought to market an embedded version of our edge agent designed to run on these very small constrained devices brings our drag and drop development environment, trying to bring that approachability of technology uh, that you can get through bigger gateways all the way down to the embedded edge. Hmm. Um, so that's where, you know, the industry has to, the tooling has to increase. It has to get easier back to, you know, our number one value as a product is the usability. We want to make it enjoyable. So, um, you know, we're trying, the ecosystem has to work harder too, but embedded plays a huge role in making connected products successful. Um, still a lot of opportunity to make that as easy as it can be. Yeah, and um, one thing I wanted to ask you, aside from the kind of use case we were talking about a second ago, are you seeing any other kind of popular use cases pop up for IoT producers? Uh, yeah, so use the word IoT producer there. Um, that's kind of what, a phrase that we use to describe um, the companies that are, producing, delivering IoT as, you know, I, I say an integral part of the thing they manufacture. Sure. Um, 
the opposite of an IoT consumer, which is more using IoT to understand their own environment. Right. Uh, so, yeah, when it comes to use cases for producers, that's really backing into, you know, what are the types of services that companies can sell to their mm. customer base? Um, industrial manufacturers, by far the largest opportunity. Uh, but when you get in a smart environment, there's there's two windows there. You had mentioned, you know, the uh, the real estate management companies think about them becoming IoT producers. They develop their own mm -hmm. product. They sell it to their tenants. So every one of their tenants don't have to go out and find their own smart environment solution. They can acquire right. it straight from the property manager. Mm -hmm. um, another really big one for us is telecommunication companies. They have a wonderful foundation of connectivity and they're out there pursuing um, value added services. They're becoming IoT producers, producing these products and services that piggyback on their core connectivity, extending right. it in new ways, new value. Um, for us, Verizon is a really big customer that we have. Um, they have brought to market their critical asset tracker, which is um, GPS tracking, as well as their condition-based maintenance solution, which they sell into their industrial customers. Hmm. Yeah, so it seems like it's a great way to kind of extend the value of existing product lines for these producers that we're talking about. Um, tell me about kind of what you've seen, not just obviously having another thing to sell, but what what kind of business models is this kind of enabling for companies? Is it more subscription based? Are there new business models um, that you know maybe we're not thinking about or we don't hear mm -hmm. about as often that are now being enabled um, because of of these producers kind of building these solutions and, mm -hmm. and selling them? Yeah, that's probably the most attractive part, especially to industrial mm -hmm. uh, manufacturers. You know, they're normally in a world where they you know manufacture a large, expensive piece of equipment, they sell it. And outside of maybe some support and service contracts are kind of done. Revenue stream is basically stopped. So um, what's really nice about surrounding your piece of equipment with a value added service is now you get your one time revenue model. But these connected services are almost exclusively licensed as subscription or recurring Mm. Um, services. So now you can get into the recurring revenue game, which is an area a lot of companies want to get to. Right. Um, so obviously new revenue. The the other is um, increased sellability. So the technology you add to a product makes it more attractive and adds sellability because of how much easier you've made it to integrate into some of these larger smart environment or smart manufacturing solutions. So if we pretend you're an industrial equipment maker and um, you have sold this piece of equipment and it has all this technology into it, you're probably selling it into someone else's manufacturing process. They're going to want to include your piece of equipment with a bunch of other vendors into a broader um, you know, industry 4.0 solution. So if you're selling a piece of equipment that has this technology integrated into it, all of a sudden it made their job a lot easier. Um, right. So it's going to be more attractive. Uh, you're going to get a recurring revenue model attached to it. Just generally um, increases your competitive advantage um, and uh, customer satisfaction. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, super interesting kind of just way to think about how IoT is being not just built and where the demand is coming from, but also how it's kind of getting out to the end user. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely different channels are being opened. Uh, something I wanted to ask you is, um, so if we talk about um, the value of vendors investing in R&D to enterprise or to IoT enterprise consumers, why, why is that so, so important um, kind of in their process? Um, I, I would, I guess I'd go back to customer expectations right now are extremely high okay. and the competitive landscape is extremely tough, um, especially in the industrial space and telco space. You know, those are, you know, fairly competitively active industries. So if you're a, a vendor or a company thinking about how do I stand out? How do I make my product more attractive? Um, that's where this R&D investment is coming in. Mm. Certainly, you have to think about it in terms of customer value. I'm not going to lie and say we haven't had uh, uh, innovation for innovation's sake come through. That's the, a bad way to think about it. But, um, you know, this technology you put in place really is to increase the value of equipment in the hands of your customer. Um, the equipment's going to be easier to use. Um, the overall lifetime cost is going to be less. That remote monitoring, remote maintenance, remote service uh, really can 
drastically reduce uh, the ongoing service costs of a piece of equipment, all boiling back to you're going to make a better product. So your R&D investment is uh, to make your product more attractive and more better for your end customers. Fantastic. Um, so one of the last questions I want to ask you uh, before we wrap up here is high level challenges in the space. What, where are you seeing kind of the biggest roadblocks, the biggest headaches that companies are coming across in their kind of journey to being successful with, with IOT? You can kind of approach it from any stakeholder's point of view, but, mm -hmm. but, but just, I'd love to hear from your perspective, kind of where you see the biggest challenges lie. And then also with the advice to kind of how to overcome those challenges, if they mm -hmm. are able to be overcome. Yeah, yeah, I would say the, uh, I would start with, I guess I'll go to one organizational, more business, the other one technology. So sure. um, a lot of times organizations pursuing, especially this connected product world, now they're uh, selling a service versus a, you know, a, a piece of equipment. Um, that's a way different way of doing things. It's a different way to support a product. Software products, cloud services are supported quite a bit differently. Um, so we, you know, it's not unusual a customer gets it out in the market and then, you know, they haven't quite figured out, well, how do we support this? Um, it's, it's just different. Do I use my normal product support channels? Do I do this? How do I sell it? Um, that's another common problem. How do I monetize this? Uh, so a lot of that work has to be thought through up front to have right. kind of that successful product launch. Um, and on the technology side, a lot of it does boil down to, uh, the hardware, the sensors, um, and also starting small. Hmm. Uh, a lot of times companies do get you know, excited. They're like, this, this looks great. This technology is awesome. It's going to change the way we do business. And then you know, they have this giant group of um, uh, people and stakeholders in an organization. They come up with hundreds of use cases they want to pursue for IoT. That's too big. Um, sure. You can't move that forward. It's too big of a step. So kind of distill it down into you know, what's kind of the smallest value that you can add to your customers. A lot of times it's, can I just get the data from the controller in the cloud so people can see it anywhere in the world? Stop mm. there. See if your customers even care. Um, that's another one. You know, fail fast is, is sometimes really good. Um, limit your investment, limit your risk. So, you know, starting small sometimes is a big challenge. Companies really don't like to start small. They want to do something big and splashy, but, you know, sure. keep your ideas under control and also think through the organizational side uh, very carefully. You're, you're, you're stepping into a whole new type of product, a whole new type of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you've got the organizational processes in place to, to handle that. And how do you, um, when you work with companies and there, because there's obviously lots of different pieces to an IoT solution. It's not just the platform and the software. There's the connectivity, there's the hardware. How do you work with companies? Or I guess what advice do you have for companies out there looking to understand how to kind of decipher all the different types of options and choices that they have and make the correct decision for their individual use cases. Is that something they should like kind of lean more on the platform company and systems integrated that they're working with? Or is that something that they themselves can kind of take on to, um, to help make the right decision? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one that I, that I missed. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. The, um, that is certainly another challenge. The, um, the IoT technology stack is one of the most complicated. So like you mentioned, hardware, connectivity, platform, integration, experience, cloud, you got all this stuff has to come together. Um, for us, you know, we do a really nice job, I think, on on helping our customers. We've seen a lot of the, um, of the hardware and connectivity options. We know what works and what doesn't work. So um, that's something that we do as a platform provider. We will help customers navigate all of that. Um, so that is an option. Work with the, the platform provider if, you're, if your provider does offer that. Um, the, the other one would probably be the system integrator or the you know, professional services group um, that can help uh, pull all this together. Um, it's also not unusual to do internally, but it is, it's a lot to understand. You likely will have to find um, some dedicated resources or kind of hire new resources that you may not already have internally. Uh, mm. to kind of tackle that. But yeah, for us, um, you know, because we're the platform, we're kind of central to the IoT applications that get delivered. All the data is coming to us and the experience is built on us. Uh, we've built up a pretty nice um, uh, just knowledge base of, of what's going to work and what's not going to work. And, and right. you know, we, we share that back to uh, the customers that use us. Absolutely. Um, and for customers out or potential customers out there and people interested in learning more uh, about the company, what you have going on, follow up with questions, what's the best way they can do that? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, losant.com, L-O-S-A-N-T. Um, we do have what we call the developer sandbox. So if you are a developer and want to get your hands uh, dirty immediately, uh, you can start building for free. It's um, 10 devices. Um, you can get started. So, Fantastic. And uh, through losant.com, you can find some contact information. Happy to give um, anyone that wants a full demo and, and talk about their solutions and how we might be to help. Great. And um, anything kind of new, exciting coming out of Losan that we should be on the lookout for, kind of pay attention to? Yeah, you know, I would say that Embedded Edge Agent that I mentioned, that's our newest mm -hmm. major release, did that just late last year. And okay. like I said, that is that is bringing our low-code visual workflow engine, which is, what, in my opinion, one of the coolest parts of our platform, uh, down into the embedded world. So that's definitely Fantastic. something if you're a firmware engineer or you want to add some intelligence directly into your device's controller, that's definitely something worth uh, checking out. Awesome. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for your time. This has been a great conversation. I really appreciate it. We have big, big, been big fans of Losin for a while, um, working with your team and getting the content out that you all kind of share with our community. It's been fantastic. So I really appreciate you taking the time here. I know we have some other videos and content scheduled to build together. So I'm really looking forward to getting this out to our audience. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.